Hey everybody, welcome back, Alex here. I got the M1s, M1 Pro, M1 Max, and the good old M1 MacBook Air here. And all these machines have GPUs on it that can be used for data science, uh, machine learning tasks, things like that. So on this MacBook Air, this is the 2020 model, and it has eight cores of GPU. This MacBook Pro 16 inch has 16 cores of GPU, and uh, this one has 32 cores of GPU. I know what you're gonna say, well, Alex, it's clear who's gonna win this test, isn't it? Yeah, I, it is clear. It's gonna be the M1 Max. So if that's all you wanted to know, which one of these is gonna execute this uh, TensorFlow test that I'm about to run on it, the faster one is gonna be the M1 Max, okay? Then it's gonna be the M1 Pro, and then the MacBook Air. The question is, if you are doing data science and machine learning, how much time can you save doing these kinds of models? If you have a Mac and you're building these models, what's the extra money that you spend on an M1 Max MacBook Pro going to get you over an M1 MacBook Air, for example? And if you wanna go somewhere in the middle with the M1 Pro. Recently, I did a video breaking down what MacBook SOC configurations are good for which dev role. For example, web front ends, back ends, dev ops, data engineers, data science, security, things like that. Check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. But uh, I recommended getting the M1 Max as a machine if you're doing data science. And a few of you have commented out saying that you actually do data science with the M1 MacBook Air. That's interesting. Yes, you can do data science with it, but you're gonna be limited to what you can do with it. And we're gonna find out today how much you're gonna be limited, especially if you're gonna be using libraries like TensorFlow that are targeted for metal, uh, specifically for Apple silicon version of metal. So what are we doing today? I saw a tweet by Thomas Kappel. I hope I'm saying that right. He actually helped me out to set this up through a couple of Zoom sessions. <laughs> Thanks, Thomas. But this is his repository for doing the benchmark. So he shows you how to set this up. I'll leave a link to it uh, in the description down below if you want to run this yourself. And you even have some results that you can go directly into, like this report right here. So if you're interested in that, hop right into it and you're done. Thanks for coming. I'll see you all later. Bye. Oh wait, did you wanna see how I run this test? Okay, we're gonna do that now. So here's his explanation and his uh, blog post about deep learning with M1 Pro on Apple Silicon. Uh, so take a look at this blog post, it's very cool. He also links to another YouTube video. Since you like YouTube, I know you do, you, you're over here, so you must like it. Or maybe you hate it and you're just here by force. Somebody's holding a gun to your head. I don't know, I better shut up now before YouTube demonetizes me or something. So this guy right here, linked to in the blog post, Jeff Heaton. I've seen a couple of his videos and he digs really deeply into machine learning. So if you're curious, Want to learn more about machine learning? He's a professor, you can check it out. I'm not a professor, I'm just running these tests and that's what I'm gonna do now. Back to the repository, all the instructions are here and that's what I'm gonna run. I'm gonna execute the instructions in this repository. This does require a little bit of preparation, which I've already done and that's creating a Conda environment, installing all your dependencies, including TensorFlow for Metal, which I've already done. I'm not gonna rehash that again. And if you wanna see my video on setting this up, setting up a Conda environment with Python, you can check that out. Uh, I'll leave a link to it down below as well. All right, now all that's left to do is actually execute this test. So I'm gonna go here. Uh, now he has a little placeholder, your GPU name. I'm gonna say M1 Pro M for mobile. You know, I'm gonna do dash M. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing here. Your GPU name, M1 Max dash M. And I'm repeating this only one iteration. So uh, from what I've seen before, it takes about 20 minutes on the M1 Max. I already ran it on that machine before. So it takes about 20 minutes to do. I'm gonna pause the video, come back to it, and then we'll see how long each one of these takes. Now this one has half the number of cores than the M1 Max does. So it should take two times longer to do the test. This one has four times less cores. So it should take four times longer. We'll see. You can also set the repeat flag to multiples and that's just gonna run that same exact learning process multiple times, which is gonna take a very long time to do. So for the purposes of this video, for the purposes of this demo, I'm only gonna run it once. All right, everybody's all set up. We're ready to go. Here's our little friend. And uh, I don't have a name yet for this contraption, but you've all submitted a bunch of names that we're gonna go through and maybe even do a vote on. So thanks for that. So you're gonna have a name soon. Don't worry, little buddy. For now, you shall remain nameless, but you're still gonna help us press the enter key at the same time. Wait, why am I doing this? I'm using the time command to do this. Eh, for old time's sake, right? All right, and let's go. Haha, <laughs> that worked. All right, here they go. We're off to the races, folks. Uh, this is gonna take a little while. I'm gonna go out, have a lunch, a burger maybe. 
I don't know what I'm going to have, but I'll be back later. Oh, oh, before I go, I want to show you something. So I'm going to go to activity monitor and this is not going to affect the test that much. Me looking at this right now. So don't worry about that. Uh, I'm going to look at the GPU and you can see that we're using 99% of the GPU. Now this is being reported a little bit differently than the CPU reporting happens on a max CPUs get reported and all the different cores get added up. But the percentage of the GPU is reported as the total percentage for all the cores that are available. So here 99% of the 32 cores on the M1 Max are being used by this process. And the similar kind of thing is happening on these other machines as well. I'm just not gonna open the activity monitor on those, but I've already checked, so that's what's happening on those. By the way, the temperatures are already getting hot here. It's getting pretty warm. The M1 Max is at 91 degrees Celsius. And what's interesting here is the fans, okay? Because this one has so many more GPU cores, I have a feeling it's getting a lot hotter quicker. So we're in the orange here, and the fans are at 2400 RPM on the M1 Pro we're at 87 degrees so not yet in the orange and the fans are 1500 rpm of course the m1 macbook air has no fans we're at 89 degrees over there i think things are going to get a little warmer but definitely there's some noise being generated by the m1 max macbook pro from the fan it's not very loud but it's uh audible all right, a quick update, folks. The M1 Max has finished as expected first. And this took 21 minutes and 48 seconds to do. You got a machine, you wanna try out this test on your own? Now you got something to compare it against. So there you go. The fans are off, the machine is cooling down. It's at 48 degrees Celsius. These machines are still working at it. The M1 Pro is at 84 degrees. It never got into the orange, which is interesting because at one point I saw the M1 Max get it up to 3,500 RPM in the fan and it was constantly in the orange whereas the m1 pro stayed under 90 degrees the whole time its fans are at 2000 rpm right now i don't hear anything actually yeah i hear a little bit if i get pretty close to it but overall it doesn't bother me it's uh pretty inaudible all right the m1 macbook air is at 82 degrees never got above 90 so it's always staying in the black but it's also taking a very long time to do this so both of these machines are going to take a little bit longer i'll be back later uh, by the way while i was recording the video since it took such a long time i decided to go through all the names that you suggested and we've got a name for this tool which is going to be called yeah let me uh let me just make sure the votes are all in yeah the votes are in. The winner so far is the Schwarzenegger. 60% <laughs> lead for the Schwarzenegger. Now it could turn around. I'm going to leave this poll up for a little bit longer. Well, you know what? I'll leave this poll up until this video that you're watching right now comes out, which is probably going to be next week. I know it's a little confusing, the time shift between the editing and the recording. But uh, yeah, if that changes, we're going to rename it. But for now, this is the Schwarzenegger. That took a while, ladies and gentlemen. We're almost done. I can't believe this, but this is happening right now. We're going to be done with both of these. I decided to wait for both of these to be done before I report the results and come on are we here are we there where are we I don't know what it's doing it's probably spinning down doing something but uh, that was epoch 10 out of 10 and I'm really hoping it's done right now okay <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that had me worried for a little bit. That took one hour, 56 minutes, and the M1 Pro took 40 minutes to finish. 40 minutes, 25 seconds to be exact. One hour, 56 minutes, and 40 seconds. Now, if you do have a NVIDIA GPU, it might be faster on that one. Just saying. I have an NVIDIA 3070 in that box right there. It's an Asus gaming laptop. I don't game on it, uh, but I do use it for my NVIDIA GPU tasks. Let me know if you want to see any comparisons between these. Anyway, hopefully this was helpful. If it was, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. <laughs> See you later, folks. Thanks a lot for coming.